So the next uh, little demonstration that we're going to do is actually drawing a dose, so disp dose dispensing. And we're going to um, use the uh, MDP that we've just simulated making, so again it's not radioactive. So I'm not wearing gloves, I'm just uh, um, doing the video. Um, and so again what we want to do is think about everything beforehand. So um, I've got a 1 mil syringe here, and the reason I've got a 1 mil syringe here is because we made this up a few minutes ago in 8 gigs in 5 mils. We want to draw up 800 megabeg dose for the patient, uh, nice round numbers, so we know that we're going to draw up a 0.5 mil dose. Typically is that you don't want to actually draw up a dose that's any more than about half the volume of the syringe. So if we need to draw up a 0.7 mil dose, I would go to a 2.5 or 3 mil um, syringe. Um, but because it's 0.5, we're going to get away with using a, uh, a 1 mil syringe. Um, so if you're going to draw up a 3 mil dose, you would use a 5 mil syringe, um, not a 3 mil syringe. So um, same thing is that, uh, now this could be potentially uh, radioactive. So uh, what we actually have is, uh, there could have been you know, two or three doses drawn out of this already. So this needs to be uh, uh, cleaned and disposed of appropriately. Um, we want to have all our tools um, ready to go. So we've got our syringe. Um, we're going to actually put this into uh, a tungsten syringe shield for injection of the patient. So that's sitting uh, essentially adjacent to me, uh, but not on the bench. And on the, off on the other side, we've got the actual pot, the lead pot that we're going to use to transport the dose to the patient. So we know what we want to draw up. We know what we're doing. Um, so again, is that uh, we've got our um, recapper sitting behind. Uh, pop that in directly down while it's uh, being held vertically. Um, you can hold this up, you can see uh, a um, window there if you want. But if you hold it up at a slight angle, then um, if you hold it up at a slight angle, sorry you couldn't see that, then this, uh, the lid uh, will uh, rotate away from the, the needle. So you don't have to worry about trying to hold that away from the needle and syringe. So we've got that in there, we want to rotate it around so that we've got um, um, our metrics. Um, and we're going to, again, keep things parallel. So we want the, the syringe and needle in perfect line with the, um, um, with the vial, rather than at an angle like that where you could end up with some leakage and spillage. So we're just going to ensure that we have um, uh, a drawing from the, uh, the volume of... Um, of uh, so if I've got the needle all the way in, it's just going to draw air. So you can see, I don't know whether you can see in that window, that if I've got the needle all the way in, then it's in the air. And so you're only going to draw air. If you can, I don't know whether you can see that. If you can pull that all the way back, then all of a sudden is you're going to get um, the uh, the volume of activity rather than the air. And so in the syringe here, while it looks fairly clear, uh, there's no air bubbles. There's a tiny little air bubble at the bottom, um, but that's okay. And we've got our 0.5 mils. So we just withdraw that. We drop our uh, MDP and store it at the back, of course. And before we've drawn that dose, we've actually checked all of that. Um, you know, we've checked the label that we've put on it before, made sure it hasn't expired, and then this goes into the dose calibrated assay. And of course it came out to be about 788 megabecks because we did our calculations perfectly. Now rather than leaving that syringe there, you'd be sticking it in a lead pot that was sitting beside if you actually had to do any adjustments, right? So it's not sitting out open. And so at this particular point, now that I know that I've got the activity that I want, I might actually change needles. Okay, so we already saw in the previous video how I would um, change um, the needles uh, in terms of opening it. And so in this particular case, I'm going to hold it like that. So I've opened my new one. I've got my uh, old one. I'm just going to swap. This one immediately goes back to the lead pot, and this one goes into the waste. So, uh, and then we're ready to go. We've got a fresh needle on for injection. And so here's our carry pot with its own um, um, injector on it, or um, sorry, recapper on it, and that would go off to the patient. Now, of course, uh, in the meantime, is that some people like to inject with one of these tungsten syringe shields, or sometimes they're lead. And so if that was the case, then you would carefully put that within it, so you can see that there's a release um, to allow that to slide in. And um, you've got your windows, so there's no sense pushing it all the way in so that uh, activity hangs out the bottom. So you've got your window so you can see where your volume is. Um, that creates some weight though, and by creating weight, you've got to be really careful about how you use it. If you drop that, it's going to get a little bit more momentum and create some spills. So you do need to be careful. When you actually pop that into your um, 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 pot, your syringe carrier, is that you can see when it gets to this point, if you drop it, okay, and then if you're going to get it out, if I pull it out by the plunger, 
because it's got weight, it's going to introduce an air bubble. Okay, so you need to be really mindful that once you start using these, of how they interact and how you're then going to manipulate them. Because you can see there, that plunger has come all the way out, okay, and introduced a whole big air bubble. So if I pull that out now, just by lifting it up, is that you can see that there's a whole bunch of air bubbles in there, um, and we don't want to be injecting that into the patient. So just be really mindful of what that weight uh, then does um, to the manipulation uh, um, of the um, syringe.